Can I put this to one of our audience members? We have uh, Khalid Alfala here. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Alfala, <laughs> it's even more irresistible to ask you um, what you think. Was the uh, reaction in markets to the decision in 2014, and I, I know that was uh, a while ago, but was the reaction in markets to the decision in 2014 by OPEC to not intervene um, what was expected at the time? Would you have forecast the degree of the price collapse, the um, length that it lasted, and the impact that it had not just on shale producers in the U.S., but on Saudi Arabia and, and other OPEC producers? By the way, at that time, I was in a means. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, so I, I, I wanted to ask you carefully. Party to the decision. But I think as an observer, I would have expected uh, rational people around the table at OPEC to make exactly that decision. Because cutting and keeping the prices at three digits in 2014 would have kept what Ken was talking about, which is one million barrels year after year after year coming from expensive North American oil, and OPEC would have had to cut year after year after year. I would have expected Saudi production to be two to three million barrels below where it is in 2017 uh, under that scenario. So obviously, rationally, uh, that is not sustainable. In the past, OPEC had made supply reduction decisions, but they were in response to short-term events like the Asian financial crisis, like the recent financial crisis in 2007, 2008, to balance markets, or in response to disruptions elsewhere. Uh, this was a structural uh, deviation between supply and demand. As mentioned by a number of the speakers, demand for oil is growing at a slower scope, a slope uh, than before, and thanks to technology, entrepreneurship, uh, and the skills uh, across the industry, we're able to tap more resources uh, than we did before. But long term, that deviation between supply and demand at $100 prices would have meant that low cost producers would have taken themselves out of the market uh, completely. Now, $50 oil, we're seeing a recovery in North America, and we're thankful for this. I can speak in my capacity uh, as the oil minister of Saudi Arabia, looking at the long term in terms of decades. We need the contributions from all sources of the oil supply base. So uh, we hope that they will be able to maintain this. My expectations is that the cost will creep up. The supply industry has been decimated. And some of them are buying jobs today at $50 oil just to stay afloat. Once they see that their clients, the operators uh, in the shale and elsewhere, are uh, in the black, they will start raising costs. So I think costs will go up. They will, they will be uh, an inflation. And I think the balancing of, of the market in 2017 will also include an inflation on the cost of doing business. Also, what is being tapped recently in North America are the most prolific. And they're not going to provide two, three, four million barrels of incremental capacity. So as demand goes, they will go to the more expensive, more difficult, less prolific uh, areas in the shale. And I think they will find that they need uh, higher prices. What that price that will balance the market, nobody knows. But I think in the long term, OPEC has learned way before me that ultimately what rules is the market. And OPEC is going to try to minimize fluctuations within the oil markets, but we cannot eliminate them. Certainly, we're not in the business of setting a price. $100 or $60 or $70 is no longer a realistic expectation. Some of the OPEC member countries may desire this, but we certainly cannot do it.